Hey everyone, are you ready to be fired up? Because I sure am. We have got a guest today that's gonna be talking all about marketing. So if you're ready to learn about marketing and how to accelerate your business to stand out, then this is the show for you. So sit tight, get ready to be fired up. Hi Cody, how are you? Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. You are from Australia, so I know it's a totally different time where you're at. Thanks for being on the show. Oh no! Thank you, thank you for having me here. I, I appreciate being on some the show with somebody as fabulous as you, Krista. So thank you. Oh, you're funny. So tell us, tell us a little bit about what you do. You know, um, I know that you specialize in marketing, and that's what I love. And I love people <laughs> to talk about their specialties and their genius to add as much value to the audience yeah, as yeah. possible. So the stage is yours, my friend. Yeah, look, so, so marketing is the money part of your business, right? So most people start a business thinking that they're, you know, they're, they're going to get satisfaction. They're going to they're gonna combine, combine their passion with their income and have the dream situation. But what they fail to understand is that no marketing equals no money. Yeah. Great, great marketing equals great money. Poor marketing equals poor money. And that, that's the part that's missing in most people's businesses. They understand, they understand what they do and they understand how to get the results or the outcomes for the people that they're working with, but they don't understand how to get bums on seats and get people through the door. So that's where I kind of kind of sit right there is helping businesses uh, bridge that gap between them being great at what they do and then actually delivering that value to, to the real world. It's so true. I mean, most professionals go to school, they get their degrees, they spend all this time and they're so excited. They want to save the world and help everyone. And then they get out there and it's like, okay, great. How do I get clients now? Right? So give us some strategies and some tips. Like if I was a business coming off the streets, let's just say a service provider, right? A doctor, attorney, lawyer, CPA, accountant, mortgage professional, real estate agent, what kind of advice? And that was kind of broad there, but just service (laughs) providers in general, um, what kind of advice would you give them and where would you start? Yeah, so, so I've worked with lots of dentists, for example, so I know, I know a little bit about dentists. And, and I can tell you, like, after four years of medical school, medical school, they literally have two days of marketing training, literally two days of marketing training. So the, the dentist they could, or, or any, any professional, really, they come out of, uh, you know, the institution that they've been trained in, and, and that institution has probably trained them very effectively to deliver the service that, that they deliver, but they just don't know how to actually bridge that gap. So that the, the big thing is you've got to understand what business that you're in. Most, most businesses owners have no idea. And, and I'm not talking about the Ray Kroc example where it's like, what business is McDonald's in real estate? It's like, what, what business, a dentist, for example, what business is a dentist in? Well, the answer to that question, the dentist is in the business of marketing and dental care is his product. Most people confuse products for the business that they're in. If, you, if you're in business and you're trying to make money, if you're trying to achieve financial freedom, you're in the business of marketing. Oh, I love that. I've never had anyone put that into perspective the way that you just did. And that is so true. Because Say that one more time, because it just really <laughs> resonated with me and I want the audience to hear it. Yeah, so, so you've got to understand that if you're, you're in the business of marketing and if you're a chiropractor, fixing people's backs is your product. So when, when people go talk to a chiropractor, say, what business are you, are you in? They, the, the chiropractor will say, I'm a chiropractor. Or the dentist will say, I'm a dentist. Uh, you know, I think, no, that's the product you deliver. You're in the business of marketing. Oh, yeah, so because I, you, I, can't have a, you can't have a business if you can't market. So, you know, without... That, that, that's right. So, I mean, over the last, you know, six or seven years, I, I mean, I see behind you, you've got a bunch of, you know, two, two comma club awards. So you've obviously done lots of stuff in lots of areas, but you've only been in one business. You've only been in the business of marketing. You've just changed your product. You know, so, so I'll go from software to coaching to done for you services to being an author. And it's like all of those are just products. I, I, I'm in the business, I, you know, people go, oh, you changed so much. I'm like, I, I've been in the business of marketing for 10 years. I haven't changed my business in 10 years. Oh, that's so true. In the business, it's, it's marketing. That's all it is. It's just like, man. Okay. So you're in the business of marketing. So, you know, great point. Dennis comes out, they're so excited to go serve. Um, you know, they've gotten all this education and they just have nowhere to start and they're, they're taught to do, what are they even taught to do? I mean, nothing, right? I mean, they're just, they expect businesses to come to them. Exactly right. And, you know, they, you know, they start their marketing, you know, they just, they just do their best, right? I mean, it's like, they've just been dealt a crappy hand of cars. They've just been, you know, spent all that money on time on med school and then they're just pushed out and they're, you know, they're beautifully equipped to drill holes and tees, but they've got no skills whatsoever to get people in. So like a, a good example would be with dentists, like a slogan that changes dentists businesses are, you know, eat, live and smile pain free. That was a slogan that came up with that increased increased response rates, increased conversion rates, just massively off the chart, because that's what people want from a dentist. They want to, um, they want to eat, you know, live and smile pain-free. That's it. 
and, and yeah. if you, are, you, know, you, you can ask the question, you know, what would it mean to eat an apple? And that, that's enough for somebody to spend $25,000 on a surgery. What would it mean for you to be able to eat an apple? Or what would it mean for you to, to be able to smile without feeling self-confident or, or self-conscious? That's enough to get somebody over a $25,000 hump, whereas the dentist is sat there going, we're going to use titanium inserts and we're going to use this and that. And it's like, Nobody cares. cares. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? But, but <laughs> what's the outcome? So you just got on a really good point, really understanding who your client is and yep. understanding what their pains are and how you solve their pain. So identifying who your client avatar is, living the life of that client avatar, getting into their world, knowing everything about them, and then being able to understand how to create content and copy that, that messaging actually speaks to them. And I've always been told marketing is attraction. So basically when you're um, marketing, is it's, it's just that it's attraction, right? And sales is persuasion. So we we need to be able to attract the right audience and then we can persuade them and we gain sales by that, by making sure that we are answering their, you know, uh, effectively having answers and solutions to their problems. So tell me if I was a dentist, what would your advice to me be? Where would I start? Well, you got to figure out what people really want. How do I like, do that? Well, a good place to start is asking them. Okay. Yeah. How do I ask them? <laughs> so, all right. So if I say, look, if we was to work together, Chris, if, you, if, I, if, I was a, if I was a genie, you could rub me and I'd come out and give you one wish. What would that wish be? If we, if we, if we worked together and we could achieve one big outcome, solve one big problem in your business, what would that be? I want more c c c customers. I don't want leads. I want more customers. customers right. More so actual now, So now we've got that, that. Now we start to peel the onion, right? Why do you, I call it peeling the onion. Why do you want more customers? Well, I want to serve more people, obviously, make more of an impact, make more of an income. And why is that important to you? Because then I have more flexibility, more financial freedom and time, and I can do what I want and also be more of a philanthropist. And what are you going to do with that freedom and time? I'm going to spend more time with my family, and I'm going to volunteer more and go on vacation more and actually be able to enjoy myself while doing it. So that's what you want. You don't want clients. Yes, yes. I want to be able to go on vacation and relax. <laughs> clients are a necessary evil. Yes, 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 yes. Well, sometimes they clients, make it worse. <laughs> Just kidding. Clients, clients are a headache. Clients are hard work. Clients are going to take freedom from you and, and take time from you. So you don't want clients. You want freedom. And so like if I, if I was talking to you in terms of it's like, hey, if we could create you more freedom, if we could get you more time with your family, if we could get you more time, uh, time off and time on vacation, and we could do that in a way that grows your business and you don't have to deal with the downsides such as customer service and all that stuff. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yes, it is, Cody, but I think that sounds like a bunch of BS. I'm just being your average client. <laughs> <laughs> but if, you know, if we're talking about, like, if I'm, if I'm just talking about clients, how, you know, it's like, hey, we're running a Facebook campaign. It's like, well, how does that differentiate me from the thousand other people that have offered you a Facebook campaign in the last two weeks? It doesn't. That's right. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to actually, it's like I said, the phrase, the, the phrase that changed everything for the dentist that, that, that I worked is, you know, it, it's eat, live, and smile pain-free. That, that's what they want. People want to be pain free. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like if, you, if you're talking about, hey, get, a, get an all on four or get a, an arch or get a root canal or whatever, it's like, that, that's pain. A root canal is pain. That's not Talk about the benefits, the not the, <laughs> what are the benefits, right? Not the, not the stuff. So then, okay, so then now that we know that we need to, you know, give mm -hmm. clients what they want, answer their, um, solve their problems, how do I go about doing that? What would your, what would your solution be about how do I go about doing that? Well, you want, you want to find out, you want to find, firstly, you want to find your highest priority. You want to find buyers that prioritize your service. So for example, I'll give you an example that, that, that I use in, in my book, The 90 Day Marketing Plan. Like with the dentist, you've got the best target market is women over the age of 45. But if you take a, a woman that's 45 single and in the dating market and her poor teeth are stopping her from achieving her, her soulmate, which she desperately wants, versus a mother of three who the money that would go on dental implants, you know, she's got a van for the kids or people move or school fees or that kind of stuff. It's like, who's going to prioritize that surgery? Who's going to prioritize their expenditure, right? I can tell you when I was single and 33, I got my whole teeth done. I was like, yeah, I'm single. I'm hot. I need to fix this yeah, yeah. grill of mine. These chiclets need to be fixed. I fixed them. That's right. <laughs> so what we I do, didn't do is when I was just a mom, I waited until I was single. So I, the answer is when you're single. That's right. So what we do is we, you know, we could advertise anywhere, but we advertise on dating sites. We, we target women over, over the age of 45 on dating sites. Smart. Because guess what? They've prioritized that in their expenditure. 
a mother who's 45 who's got three kids. Both I, I could show that ad to a 45 year old mother and a 45 year old single woman, and both will book in with the dentist for a consultation. So I can go, hey, look, you know, consultation, consultation, both consultations cost 50 bucks in ad spend, whatever. But one of them's far more predisposed to buy than the other. And in, in, in any given market, no matter what you're dealing with, there are people that are predisposed to buy, that they're ready to buy right now. They've prioritized that expenditure versus people that are just interested and, and they're going to spend, but maybe not today. Maybe it's going to be next week, next year, something like that. So you've got to figure out who's, who's prioritized expenditure towards what it is that you do. I love that. So knowing who your client avatar is and knowing what their priority is, who is most likely to buy and why. And then yeah. that way you can then, then identify your targeting mark features to go after on Facebook or these different sites that you're marketing on. Oh, that's great. I love that. Like prioritizing who is more likely to buy. Great, 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 great. Cody, yeah, I love it. it. At, the, at the end of the day, look, if we can define our audience, we can find our audience. Like most people, most people got no idea who their audience is. So it's like, you know, how, how can we target? It's like, no, I believe you can have anything you want, right? But you got to know what you want. And I'll talk to business owners and say, what do you want? And they're like, oh, my, I don't really know exactly. And it's like, well, you've got it. That's what you've got. You've got indecision. You, you want, you just said, I want indecision and confusion. And that's what you've got. You know, you get some clarity, get some focus, and that's going to start to show up. So same in your marketing. If you can define your audience, you can find your audience. And the, the, the most important step is the step that everybody throws out the window, like, you know, define, you know, define your client, create your client avatar. And people are just like, Oh, no, 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 I'll just throw it out. I'll just go run some ads or whatever. It's like, yeah, well just, you know, just give me your money and stop, you know, save yourself the pain of running those ads. Cause you're not going to make any money. <laughs> yes. Especially when you're going after a large, okay. So this is, I'm totally being selfish right now. All right. So yep, yep. I am right now creating some funnels to go after, um, real estate agents, right? I want to like really grow my organization uh, through eXp because I'm with eXp now and I totally believe in the model. I love it. And so I'm going, yeah. and I already go after, as you know, uh, real estate agents and local professionals that I teach digital marketing strategies. But now I'm going after a specific type of agent that wants to um, build passive income, right? So one of the features of eXp is the ability to to build passive income by building your own organization. We call it compensation for contribution. And that's by, you know, having people come in underneath you and you support one another to help the business grow. Now, what would my targeting be specifically to that? Who would I, like, I'm thinking now that you just said that, okay, I want to go after people that are probably 50 and older because they're thinking about yeah. retiring. They're thinking about, you know, man, yeah. I don't have any retirement saved. I, there, I can't ever retire. Um, I don't have any 401k. And this is an opportunity and an ability for them to do that. So that would be one of the things that I would consider. What else would I consider, Cody? Yeah, so look, so I, I'll give you an example with dentists again that, that, that will be applicable here. I mean, I don't know your target market, but I'll give you an example so you can kind of <laughs> apply it. So yes. for me, like I like dentists that have two or more units, two or more, two or more dental offices, because that shows me some business smarts. Anyone can start a business and run it to bankruptcy. It just takes yes. no skill to do that. It takes a lot of skill. To, like if somebody started a business and, and doubled that and tripled that into multiple locations. They've got a sales process. They've got ambition. They've got business smarts, smarts and they understand the need of advertising. So, like, I'll, I'll send out a direct mail letter to dentists, and it'll say, like, hey, Mr. Dentist, if you, are, if you own two or more dental locations, this might be the most important letter you've ever read. So mm, Very it, targeted. And you know that they have, they have two. Now, you're actually still sending out snail mail? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it kills wow. it, man. It kills it. Most, it, you know, I'll get a $2,000 a month client for, for 150 bucks. Really? And you know, yeah. you can, there's lists that you can buy that there are dental offices that dentists that have two or more offices. Yeah. So look, it doesn't take it. Like if you're targeted, man, it doesn't take a lot of effort. So like 10, 10, 10 snail mails will produce a, a consultation. And it's like, you know, it's going to take my VA 15 minutes to go on Google and find 10 locations, 10, 10, 10 practices that have two locations. And then, you know, it's like, but buying lists is only necessary, man. If you, if you, you carpet bombing, we don't carpet bomb. It's like, it's the sniper rifle versus the B-52. So. So you're going it, directly after you're doing research, sending these marketing pieces directly to um, dentists yeah. that you know, have two or more throughout the country. Wow. Great. And then. Yeah. Of yeah. And, and if it's, if the, if the headline says, Hey, if you own two or more dental locations, guess what it does? It, it, it grabs the attention of, of my target market and it disqualifies everybody else. Absolutely. The more your content speaks directly to the person on the other end, the more yeah. likely they're to buy. Yeah. Totally agree with that. So, so, so the question would be like, you know, what, what are the really probably psychographical characteristics of somebody who's pursuing financial freedom in your market? You know, do they own two or more offices? 
uh, you know, what, what oh, are the God, no. most, most agents don't even own two or more homes. So that would be, <laughs> you know, it's difficult. Most don't like they're at a point yeah. now where it's like, Hey, do you have more than a hundred thousand dollars in your, in your, you know, savings account so you can retire? The answer is going to be, if, if you don't click here kind of a deal, right? Like, let me show you how you can. Yeah. 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 Cause you got, you got to think like, you know, when I, when I get on the phone with a dentist that owns say five locations, it's like, Hey, but by the process that I've just told you, A, I'm not doing nearly as many phone calls to make the number of sales. B, they're, they're qualified. It's like, you know, I'm making much more money. I'm doing much less work because I've, I've actually figured out the characteristics of my ideal client. So, what, you know, we'd have to sit down and say, what exactly are the, you know, what are the characteristics of your ideal client? And where do they hang out? Or what, what kind of websites are they looking at? So, And then you start marketing to those and putting in those interests and that type of thing into Facebook and when you're targeting them. Yeah. So I, I, like just off the top of my head, I'll probably do like, you know, double layer targeting. So it's like, I would target someone who's a real estate agent and interested in think and grow rich or an interest and interested in rich dad, poor dad. I'd, I'd start, you know, what, what kind of books are they reading? If they're reading mm-hmm. books that, that are pushing you to, you know, kind of talking about financial freedom and stuff like that, then that's a good indication that, you know, not only are they interested in financial freedom, that they're actually proactively seeking that information out, which means they're going to be more responsive than, you you can say to anybody, Hey, you know, if I could help you get to financial freedom, would you be interested? And the answer is yes. But if you, if you, if you got two people and one's read rich dad, poor dad, one's read think and grow rich, one's read, you know, the power, the magic of thinking big or whatever. And it's like, the other one hasn't read anything. Both are going to say yes. Yes, exactly. So you're really getting super hyper specific focusing on your ads. Yeah. You know, nice questions too. So I call it emotional currency. It's like, I want to see emotional currency with clients before I talk to them. So for example, like, you know, I was doing some stuff for a, you know, it was a biz up company. Right. And we, you know, we, do you want to work from home? Everybody wants to work from home. Right. But we asked the question, why do you want to work from home? You know, and someone goes, well, because I, I'm stuck at home with COVID and I've got nothing better to do. Yeah. Not much emotional currency there. Whereas another guy said, Hey, I've just, uh, you know, I'm 52 years old. I've, I'm a truck driver. I've just had a stroke. I've lost my license. I've got 30 years of work ahead of me. I've got a lot, a lot of life still to live and I need a way to work. That's going to work with my, within the confines of my stroke. That guy's got emotional currency. Yes, absolutely. I love it. Okay. So you mentioned a book. So I want to, what, what is the name of the, I want you to promote your book. What's the name of the book that you <laughs> have written so people can actually, you know, kind of dive more deeper into this, the 90 day marketing plan. It's the 90 day marketing plan. That's what it's called. And it's a very confusing title. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love them. So the 90 day marketing plan from Cody Butler, and you can get that on Amazon or do you sell a digital copy of it? Yeah, there's a digital copy and go to the 90 day marketing plan dot biz or go to, go to Cody Uh, and, and it's on Amazon as well. So there's, you know, I, I make it easy for people to do what I like for them to do, which is buy a copy of the book. There's lots of ways you can buy it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, um, he can start targeting you and, you know, going after you since he knows that you're, you'll be a great, um, people farm. Okay. So now you've identified your, your target market. Um, you've identified yep. the level of, you know, how ready are they? Um, what's their priority as far as, as far as yep. buying, you identified your messaging as you know, their interests and such what's next. So now we reach out to them. Now we, now we, now we throw the, the bait into the water and go fishing. Okay. And do you do that just, <laughs> you do that through Facebook ads and through, um, yeah, Facebook, so and then also snail mail. Yeah. So I use personally, like it's going to depend on the industry. And so there's, there's no right or wrong way. Like, you know, it's like, is a hammer or a screwdriver better? What, what are you trying to do? It's like, you know, a hammer is a hammer and a screwdriver is a screwdriver. So like it's Facebook or LinkedIn better. Well, what are you trying to do? They're, they're, they're both great. So yeah, I use email. I use, I use snail mail. I use Facebook. I use LinkedIn. I use, I use Google ads, like any, any YouTube ads, like any way I can find anywhere I can find my target market. But, but I've been doing this for a long time, keep in mind, Chris. So I recommend starting out with just, just one and getting really, really good at just one. Just, just get really good at one because getting good at one is tough. Yes, ex- exactly. So <laughs> I always talk about learn, learn, implement, master, repeat. Learn one, implement it, master it. Go back and repeat it and learn it again. And then before you ever get to the next thing, then move on, but not until you've mastered the first. Absolutely that's right, agree. That's right. And that's what we've done too. We've, we've mastered Facebook and then we sort of, now we're dabbling with YouTube and, YouTube, and the such, yeah. and we still put everything everywhere, but we really, really know Facebook really, really well. Um, okay. So then what kind of title then, like, for example, your copy. So on your ads going after yeah. the dentist, so let's say, um, the, yeah. the dentist is going after, you know, the, the, the woman, uh, that's dating. What would the, what would the copy be? What would the actual wording be on the ad and what would the call to action be? 
Yeah, so it's going to be like the, the best formula is how to get X without X, right? How to get what you really want without what you don't want. That, that's always the go-to. So how to lose weight without feeling hungry. Yes, I can tell you know Russell Brunson. <laughs> <laughs> you studied Russell, huh? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a student of marketing. So yeah, I've studied lots of people, but Russell's up there for sure. I, I'm for sure a Russell Brunson fan, 100%. Yeah. But that, that's a go-to. So look... How to get X without X is a great one. Seven ways to, uh, so and with, let's, with let's the dentist. Let's go back on the how to get X. It's most, so it's like how to get the desired results, right? Yes. So how to get the smile of your dreams without costing Any you pain. millions of dollars yeah. and tons of pain, right? Yeah, yeah. On a broke budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how, to get your, how to get the smile of your dreams, uh, yeah, for less than $50 a week. Yeah, and, and pain-free. Like and yes. pay free, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. How to get? That's what he meant when he said, like, how to get X without Y. In case you weren't, you weren't sure of it. Okay, yeah, how, how to lose weight without feeling hungry. How to how to get in shape without exercising. Yeah, all those things that can never happen. How can you ever get in shape without exercising, right? Yeah. But, how, um, how to how to become financially free without taking any risk. How to start a business without taking any risk. Yes, that great, kind of stuff. great. Okay, so you help all businesses, correct, Cody? Yes, yes. Yes, and the different Absolutely. budget different budget options that you've got. Yeah, so anywhere from the, the book starts at $5.60 up to whatever you want to give me. Okay, okay, great. Okay, <laughs> so, so, the, yeah, so the high, so I do one-to-one coaching, which is $60,000 a year, and I've got a, a $5 book so, and, and pretty much everything in between, depending on how much, uh, how much assistance that you're actually looking for. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, Chris, the people say, well, will this work for my business? Will that work for that business? This is, this is a mindset people have got to change. Marketing is psychology and it's math. If, if, you, if you're dealing with people, then this is going to work for you. And if you can count to 10, this is going to work for you. Marketing is psychology and it's math. Those are the two skills that, that you're going to need to, to really make this work for you. I could not agree with you more. It works for any business, no matter yeah. business to business, business to consumer. Absolutely agree. I'm on your team with that. Yeah. Um, makes total sense. And it's just a matter of getting, finding the right audience, finding out their pain points, figuring out who's priority or not, getting out the right message and going for it and making sure that you're marketing where they're showing up so they're actually being visible and seeing you. So one more time, Cody Butler, you've been, um, you've been awesome. I appreciate the information. You've been Thank so you. great. So to find his book, The 90 Day Marketing Plan, you can go to codybutler.com or yep. go to the 90 Day Marketing Plan biz and yep. uh, go and get it. I'm going to go and get it. I know that for sure. I love learning and I can tell that he speaks my language. So um, the last minute advice and words for everyone listening. And you've been great, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I'll give one piece of advice. So it's like the, the, the most impactful thing that I ever heard from in a marketing educational situation. I was, at, I was at a conference 10 years ago and the speaker said, you can strip me naked. You can take everything I own. You can throw me out on that street outside this conference center. And he goes, this time next year, I'll be back on this stage and I'll be a millionaire. And he's like, why? Because it's what's up here in my head. He goes, I know how to make money. I know how to market a business and that's financial freedom. He's like, if you need to be if you need money to feel financially free, you'll never be financially free. Freedom is the ability to know that no matter what happens, it's your knowledge that's going to bring you back to this position. And that, that hit me like a ton of bricks right there. I'm like, that's right. It's like, you know, the marketing is the skill that's going to allow me to be free. No matter what happens to me, I know I can find an opportunity. I know I can put it out there. and I know I can generate revenue from it. And, and I, if you want to be financially free, that's the skill you want to develop. Is the right mindset to know that, you know, You'll be okay always. Just find the pain and solve the problem. And it's simple. I mean, we've, we've just covered it in a nutshell here, but it's like there's only five or six, there's only five or six moving pieces to this puzzle. And once you get it, it's like I said, you've got, you've got a bunch of two common rewards behind you. It's like you're just taking the same cookie cutter formula and taking it to different industries, right? Once you know what to do, it's easy. Yes, yes. Um, it's just so great. Such great advice, Cody. I totally appreciate it. I really appreciate you being on the time on the, on the, on the podcast. I know you are busy. You got me fired up. I'm going to be ordering that book of yours. Excited about it. Thank yes. you for your advice, Cody. Um, everyone, thank him for being here. It's been wonderful. And as always, uh, Cody, goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. And everyone, I appreciate your time. I know you're very, very busy. So thanks for spending it with us. And Cody and I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next episode of Fired Up with Chris and Maysher. Make it a great day, everybody. Smile. And remember, learning is great. But if you don't implement, nothing happens. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. 
So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.